GNS3 have released version 2.0 of the GNS3 software. This is now the current stable release of GNS3 and is the recommended version that you should be using. You can now download it from the GNS3 website and is the recommended release of GNS3 in most situations. This is a major milestone for GNS3 and is probably the biggest release in the last 10 years. This version brings a new architecture to GNS3 which allows the GNS3 developers to add new features and provides a solid foundation for future development. Major new features of 2.0 include Save As You Go, Smart Packet Capture, VPCS clouds and switch templates, a new cloud node, a new NAT node, and much, much more. You can find out what's new in GNS3 by looking at the GNS3 documentation and also looking at some of the videos that I've posted on YouTube. Now there's an important note with regards to upgrading. Don't upgrade if you're working on something important like a certification or something else. There is no rollback possible from version 2.0 to older versions of GNS3. Now to upgrade from a previous release of GNS3, have a look at the document, Upgrade to GNS3 2.0, available in the GNS3 documentation. Again, there is no rollback. Back up all your projects, settings, and snapshot the GNS3 VM before you upgrade. If you still have projects created in 0.8.x, open them with a version 1.x version of GNS3 before migrating to version 2.0. There is no direct conversion from 0.8 to 2.0. Again, don't upgrade if you're in the middle of something important. Huge effort has been put into testing version 2.0 of GNS3 but it's not possible to test all environments, scenarios, images, and so forth. In this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade a Windows version of GNS3 to version 2.0. The process is the same whether you're using version 1.5.x or, or a beta or release candidate of version 2.0. Firstly, close GNS3, back up your projects, Download the version 2.0 software from the GNS3 website. Install it directly on top of the current installation. There is no need to uninstall a previous release. If you're using a GNS3 VM, you need to upgrade it as well. If you scroll down further in this document, you'll see a section called GNS3 VM, and you're told that you should snapshot the VM in case you have a problem and then you can do an upgrade of the VM by going to version and selecting 2.0. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate upgrading both a GNS3 GUI as well as the GNS3 VM running within Windows 10. The process is once again the same whether you're using version 1.5 or version 2 of GNS3. So first thing we need to do is shut down the GNS3 GUI. There are two steps here. We are going to upgrade the GNS3 GUI and then we'll upgrade the GNS3 VM. So while that's shutting down, what I'll do is browse to the GNS3 website and click on download. If you don't have an account for GNS3, create an account. Otherwise, click login, put in your credentials and click Login and continue to download the software. So notice there are two components. We have the GUI component or executable in the case of Windows, as well as the GNS3 VM. I'm not going to download the GNS3 VM because we're going to upgrade the current GNS3 VM already installed and running. So I'm gonna click Download on the Windows link I'm gonna save the executable to my local hard drive. 
Now this video once again demonstrates the upgrading of GNS3 on a Windows PC. I'm going to demonstrate how to upgrade both the GUI as well as the GNS3 VM. In a separate video I'll show you how to upgrade Mac OS. If you're running Linux the instructions are shown here. If you want me to create a video demonstrating how to upgrade Linux let me know. Okay, so my GNS3 executable has downloaded. I'll open up the folder and you can see that GNS3 2.0.0 all-in-one has downloaded. The file is 55 meg in size, but be careful. GNS3 during the installation process will download both Wireshark and other software that you select during the installation process. So be careful if you are using an internet link that's slow or where you pay per meg of data. That's not the only file that's gonna be downloaded. Now, when you install GNS3, you don't uninstall the current release. Just make sure that you've shut it down. So as an example in Windows, in Task Manager, make sure that GNS3 is not running and then simply double click on the new executable to install the software. The wizard is very similar to previous releases of GNS3. So we firstly have a welcome screen, click next. GNS3 is free software licensed under the GNU general public license. You need to agree to this license to continue. So I'm gonna click agree. Various options are now displayed. I'm gonna stay with the defaults. So as an example, I'm going to use the default start menu folder of GNS3 and click next. I'm also going to keep the default software. So as an example, I'm gonna install WinPCAP. I'm gonna install Wireshark. I'm gonna install SolarWinds, Dynamips, QMU, VPCS, and other options. Have a look in the GNS3 documentation if you want to unselect some of these options. As an example, SolarWinds Response Time Viewer is not required, but you obviously need to install GNS3 if you want to run GNS3. But you may choose to unselect other options. I'm going to stick with the defaults and click Next. Again, I'm going to use the default installation folder and click Install. Now at this point, I'm told that WinPCAP is already installed. You don't have to click OK at this point. You can simply click Cancel to bypass the installation. I'm going to reinstall WinPCAP just to show you the installation options. I'm gonna click Finish at this point. Notice what happens here. Because I selected Wireshark, it's now being downloaded automatically and is going to be installed silently. Notice it's now being installed. So be careful, again, if your internet speeds are slow or you're paying per meg of data, you may want to unselect Wireshark and the SolarWinds Response Time Viewer, which is now being downloaded as well. In my example, I'm just choosing all the defaults and I'm not concerned about internet speeds. To install the SolarWinds Response Time Viewer, you need to input your email address and click Continue. This is once again optional software, so you don't need to install this if you don't want to. I'm again just choosing all the defaults and I'm installing the software per the defaults. Now I have noticed that there is a delay when you install the SolarWinds Response Time Viewer. So you may need to just wait a bit during the installation process for this software. So we can see that it's installing and the SolarWinds Response Time Viewer has now installed. I'm gonna click Finish. The actual GNS3 software and other software is now installed. So you simply wait for the installation process to complete. And there you go the GNS3 installation has completed. So I'm gonna click Next. You can install the SolarWinds standard tool set, which is a $200 value. I'm not gonna do that here. 
I've added a link below this video if you want to install that software later. So I'm going to click Next. I now have the option to start GNS3, but I'm not going to do that because I want to upgrade the GNS3 VM first. So I'm going to click Finish. A thank you page is shown. I'm going to close that down. And now I'm going to upgrade the GNS3 VM. The GNS3 VM is strongly recommended if you're using Windows or Mac OS. If you're not using the GNS3 VM, you can skip the rest of this video. But at this point, I'm going to demonstrate how to upgrade the GNS3 VM. So I'm going to start up the GNS3 VM. Again, the GNS3 VM is strongly recommended for both Windows and Mac OS. If you're running Linux, you don't need the GNS3 VM. But in this case, I'm going to start up the GNS3 VM. And there you go, it's booted up. In this example, I'm using a beta version of GNS3 version 2.0, but the process is the same if you're using version 1.5. You go to version and then click continue. Make sure that you have a snapshot of your GNS3 VM. Now in the documentation in the upgrade to GNS3 2.0 page, we are told that we need to click OK, go to version and then select version 2.0. But note, the text that you have may be different. If you don't have a 2.0 option, run upgrade from the previous menu. So in my example, when I go to version, and again, we warned that we should snapshot our VM, I don't have a 2.0 stable release here. So I'm going to select cancel and simply select upgrade we warned that we should have a snapshot. So I have that, so I'm gonna select yes. And what happens now is the GNS3 VM is automatically upgraded. So either upgrade it this way or through the version option, depending on which menu option is available on your computer. Now in this example, I'm actually running the GNS3 VM within VMware Fusion on my Mac, and at this point, my computer is starting to make a lot of noise. Typically, you don't want to do that. I'm simply doing it here to create this video. So you just need to wait until you get to the point where it says reboot in five seconds, and the GNS3 VM automatically reboots. Again, make sure that you have a snapshot in place before you go through this process in case you have a problem and need to restore from snapshot. In my example, the installation succeeded and now the GNS3 VM is rebooting. Okay, so the GNS3 VM has rebooted. You can see that the version is version 2.0.0. So my GNS3 VM has successfully upgraded. So now I can start the GNS3 GUI. I'll select a previous project called v2.0. And what you'll notice is the GNS3 GUI is contacting the GNS3 VM. And now my topology automatically displays. So I could go back as an example to a previously created topology. And that's now available. And I can, as an example, start one of the routers that I had previously configured in an earlier version of GNS3. So that's the process of upgrading previous releases of GNS3 to the latest current release of GNS3, which is version 2.0.0. For more information, have a look in the GNS3 documentation for this document, Upgrade to GNS3 2.0. Have a look at what's new in GNS3 2.0 for a list of new features. Have a look in the community 
for more information and help. So as an example, Jeremy posted three hours ago that GNS3 2.0 is released and has provided some information about the release. As he says here, please do not report issues in this discussion, but create a new post. So in the community, Matt's already written about a problem with the Ubuntu container not getting DHCP. So he's been following some of my YouTube videos and has a problem with configuration not being saved in version 2.0. So post problems that you have with version 2.0 in the GNS3 community. I wanna thank you for watching this video. If it's been of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.